Hello YouTube and welcome to What the Math. Today we're doing Math Studies Chapter 11, two variable statistics. This is essentially statistics when you have two different things happening at once. And what we're going to be focusing on in this video are two things. We're going to be talking about the idea of correlation and also the idea of measuring correlation, which is something we call Pearson correlation or sorry Pearson coefficient. So correlation and Pearson coefficient are the topics for today. And essentially it's, it's the same topic. It's just one of them is the idea and one of them is how to measure this idea. And to start, let's look at this opening problem from the book. So basically there's the students throwing discuses, which is sort of like Frisbee, but it's, it's something that we use in Olympic games. So it's an Olympic Frisbee and they're throwing them um, to, toward a point somewhere. And this is a distance measured. Basically we're measuring the distance that this discus flew from the student uh, and this is going to be our x it's actually right here distance thrown and so um we have different students of different ages so these are different students that are between ages of 12 i believe oh no 10 10 is the youngest and 20 is the oldest so there's two different things happening there's two different um particular values and so what we have here is a graph that kind of looks like this so we have the distance on the left side. So this is our X distance on the left side. And then we have age in years on the bottom. And if you plot every single point, you'll get something that looks like this. Now, this is what we would call a correlation. So there is uh, it looks like there's some sort of relationship between years or age and distance thrown. So basically the older the student gets, the farther they can throw the discus. And it kind of makes sense, right? The older you get, the more stronger you get, but is there an actual causation? Is there actually a cause between age and distance? And this is an important dis distinguishment or uh, basically important uh, feature of correlation. And this is something you need to always, always remember is that correlation does not mean, does not equal causation. So if one, how do you spell causation? So if one of the uh, thingies, one of the uh, um, variables is going up with the other variable, it doesn't mean that one is causing the other. And the best example of this, the best example of this misconception is actually something we've always heard people talk about. And that's, I'm going to draw this right here. That's the idea of smoking. I'm going to write smoking right here. And the idea of lung cancer. And it's really important to understand that this is not a causation and it's never been found that smoking actually causes lung cancer. It's never, never been found. What we know is that as you start smoking, as you continuously start smoking, you have an increased chance of getting lung cancer. And there's a quite a strong correlation here that this is actually supposed to be straight line. This is a strong correlation between smoking and lung cancer, but it is not a causation. This is not a causative relationship. There's no causation here. Uh, so in other words, smoking does not cause lung cancer. There's actually quite a lot of people that smoke and don't get lung cancer, but it is a correlation. There's a higher chance. There's a higher risk. So there is something going on in there, but we just don't really know what. And let me show you some of the other more uh, extreme examples of uh, a correlation that is definitely not causation. For example, here is an example of how good your place of higher education is. In other words, how good your university is. Let's just say this is going to be Harvard. And somewhere on the bottom here is going to be University of... Actually, no, the online university, because usually those are the ones that you don't want to go to. The online university of... You know, on one university, you'll never get a job. So there is, and then on the left side, we have another variable, and this is called social life reduction, also known as life crappiness. So basically, this is how sad you're, how sad you're going to be if you go here. So essentially, what this correlation shows you is, as your university quality increases, your life status and your social status and your happiness decreases. Your life becomes more and more sad. And this kind of makes sense, right? But is there a causation? Does the one cause the other? Is it, is it that the Harvard causes sadness? Well, no, it's, that's not really true. Uh, so there is absolutely no causation here. And here's another more extreme example. As the number, as an approximate number of pirates increases, the global average temperature also increases. And this is based on actual data. 
as the number of pirates across the ages increased, uh, we're talking about like real pirates, like the ones in Somalia, as those pirates increased in numbers, there's also just so happens to have been an increase in temperature, something we call global warming. So do pirates cause global warming? Think about it. And the answer is no, they don't cause global warming. It's just a correlation. So as one increased, the other one increased too. And that's the idea of correlation. And I hope I didn't just confuse you by making you think that pirates do cause global warming because they don't. And if you think that's, that's true, that's the opposite of what you should be thinking. It's a correlation, meaning that there's absolutely no cause between them. All right, let's move on. And specifically, we're going to be looking at how this looks on a graph and what uh, vocabulary we should be using for all these types of correlation. So there is three words you have to remember. That's strong, moderate, and weak. And also two more words you have to remember, and that's positive and negative. So this right here, this right here is an example of a strong positive correlation. Positive because it, you see it going up and strong because all these points are kind of close together to this imaginary line that we call this regression line. They're very close to this line and they're not spread um, across it. Here, there's a little bit more spread, so we call this moderate correlation and it's still positive. And here, there's quite a lot of spread and this is called weak correlation. So if, if you had something like that looks like this and it's still going up, but it kind of looks like there is possibly correlation, that'll be a very, very weak correlation. And then on the other side, we have a strong negative correlation. So same, same idea, but this time it's going down. This is going down. So it's a strong negative, moderate negative, and also weak negative. So you have to be able to understand these words and also use them um, whenever you're asked to use them on a test. And then, of course, we have something called outlier, which would be a point somewhere over here that doesn't actually belong to the um, actual correlation. And... There's quite a lot of disagreement about what to do with these things. Some statisticians think that they're useless. We should just disregard them. But there's actually quite a lot of studies on them. And some people actually are fascinated by the outliers because these things are usually, um, uh, the, these are events outside of the pattern. So there's actually quite a lot of reason to study them and try to understand why this one person didn't follow the pattern or why this one person is so much better than everyone else. Anyway, so this is uh, how correlation works. But because this is a math class, we have to be able to calculate correlation. We have to figure out how to find this line, how to actually figure out how to draw this line as well. And in the book, they give you this formula. It looks like this. And it will probably scare you because it has a lot of really interesting characters. So let me just try to interpret this for you. The sum of all um, x's minus uh, min of x multiplied by y minus min of y. And these are two variables. So this is this would be the variable, for example, variable on the bottom, variable on, um, on the left. Uh, and then divided by a square root of sum of x minus uh, min of x squared, multiplied by a sum of y minus my uh, min of y squared, will give you something called r. And this is what we call Pearson correlation coefficient. This is the part you have to know. So the good news is that you do not have to remember this. It's not even on your formula sheet. We don't really have to deal with this. You will deal with this in university and good luck to your professor because this is one of the most complex formulas and students always get confused about it. But our calculator can do it for us and it's actually relatively easy to do. So I'm going to show you in a second how to find Pearson correlation. But before I do, let me show you what it means. Oh, and by the way, this line right here, the one, the one that we had drawn, this is Pearson correlation uh, coefficient. This is the line that R represents. All right, let me just cover the formula so it doesn't scare you and show you what Pearson correlation is. So it, hopefully this is going to be pretty clear because I think the book does explain it really well. And essentially, if you have Pearson correlation of one, you have a positive, perfect correlation that creates a perfect, perfect, perfect line going up. This is a perfect straight line. If it's just a little bit under one, you'll have a little bit of spread. You see that the uh, the points here don't exa exactly line up with the line. If it's somewhere between 87% uh, or 0.87 and 0.95, the spread increases and so on and so forth until you have something between zero and 0 0.1 where there's a little bit correlation, but it's just all spread up across the entire graph. And the same for negative. If it's minus one perfect line, if it's something like 0.95, a little bit of a spread. And if it's something like uh, minus 0.1 or 0 is basically no correlation or very, very little correlation. It's so it's so kind of spread across the screen. And I think the weakest correlation we'll be dealing with is usually this right here, um, which is between 0.1 and 0.5. So this is where there's some correlation. We'll probably never consider the bottom part to be correlation. This will never be 
considered to be correlation, but anything between 0.1 and 0.5 is still a correlation. And what you do need to know from this chapter is how to find R. You have to be able to find this R. And how do we find it? Well, super ultra easy. Let's do an example and I'll show you how. And to find this value, we're going to be using example two from page 323, 323. Uh, and the example is this, botanical gardens have been trying out a new chemical to control the number of beetles infesting the plants. The results are shown in a table. So we have quantity of chemical used right here. That's one of the variables. I'll just call it X and we have number of surviving beetles, which is Y. So um, we're going to be testing this correlation and seeing how high or how low it is. How do we do this? Well, we're going to open the calculator and here in the calculator, we're going back to the uh, edit stat edit is the button you're looking for. So L1 is all of your X values and L2 is all of your Y values. This is something we've done many, many times. So basically in your L1, you're entering 25639 just like this and in l2 11 6 4 6 3 and that's it so now if you go to stat and then go to calc this is where you get to choose which formula you're going to use now for this one we're going to be using something called linear regression because this is linear regression this is what we're doing uh if you click on linear regression and you select this x list as l1 y list as l2 usually it's selected by default but not all calculators do it by default um, and also I would suggest, uh, so yeah, there's no frequency list, so we're not going to do this, but yeah, I suggest saving this story regression as, uh, your variable, one of the variables so you can then plot it. Uh, basically we're going to store this as Y1 then click on calculate, Cal click on calculate and nothing, you get nothing. Why? Well, because we didn't enable a regression. That's actually my mistake. And this will probably happen to you too. If nothing shows up, this is what you do. You do the following. You click on second and then on zero right here. And this is a button called catalog. I believe I've actually mentioned this before, but every single calculator has a tendency to reset back to uh, defaults, meaning that it actually turns off something called diagnostics. These diagnostics have to be turned on. Now, before every single test, I'm going to say it again, before every single test, go to your catalog and turn this on because it is going to be most likely off. You have to turn it on. Okay, done. Now let's do this again. Stat. And then you calculate and there you go. So now we have everything showing because we turned the diagnostic on. There's two numbers here, two letters, I guess, R and R square. Um, we're going to talk about R square a little bit more in detail later, but essentially it's, it's a square number of this. And what this shows you is, um, how, um, how correlated things are, uh, independent of whether they're positive or negative, but it's not as important right now. What's more important is this R, this is our uh, Pearson correlation. And, and it equals to minus 0.8589. And if you look at the table I showed you before, it means that there's quite a strong correlation, uh, quite a strong negative correlation. And we can then plot this, of course, because we just saved this in our Y right here. Uh, we can plot this by going to the graph. And if you click graph, you'll get this. But the thing is, if you change your window a little bit, uh, you will see it a little bit better. And there you go. That's your regression line. But the thing is, we're missing one more thing. And that's um, that's the points. We're actually missing the points and you can enable those by going to the stat plot, which is second Y. If you go here and you click on, uh, this, then turn it on and go down here and select the points, which are basically the first type do this. And what you'll see is all your points and regression line, just like it should be, uh, with correlation. So these are the points we had. These are the chemicals and bugs. Or what was it? Yeah, number of beetles surviving and chemical used. And this is the regression line that is basically what we call a best fit line. So this is a negative uh, 0.85 Pearson correlation a regression line that shows us that there is quite a lot of correlation between chemical used and number of surviving beetles. And before we finish, let's just briefly talk about R squared. So what is R squared? Well, it's called coefficient of determination. And essentially, it's the square of Pearson correlation. Now, you see that the number here is a little bit lower than this. It's because R square is usually a more accurate way of expressing correlation. So it's basically, it's a, it expresses the degree of correlation. 
And usually when we when we talk about correlation in general without really the direction, so it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, if we're just talking about correlation, R square is a little bit more accurate. So basically it's, it's used for accuracy. It's a more accurate way of showing the correlation between two variables. Um, other than that, they're quite the same. It's basically the same number, just one of them is squared. And essentially that's it for correlation and for uh, the beginning of chapter 11, two variable statistics. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Good luck to you and bye-bye.